Okay kids, surprise! Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here and I am ready for the reveal. Are you ready for the reveal? I hope you're as excited about it as I am. Um, first a little background. I've never been afraid of change. I've never been afraid to reinvent myself. I am in my mid-50s and I have reinvented myself numerous times. I was a linguist in the federal government for 18 years. Um, I quit when the boys entered elementary school, so I had the freedom to be with them, volunteer. I was at the school pretty much every day and I loved it. I also, um, during that time, I had a business doing scrapbooking for others. I worked at a scrapbook store in Maryland. I discovered digital scrapbooking and found that I could make a whole lot more money sitting on my butt in front of the computer than I could standing on my feet all day in a retail store. <laughs> so I worked for Scrap Girls for a number of years. I taught classes. I was the head of their education department overseeing the other teachers and helping them to create classes. I worked for a stamping company, creating models for them. I was a beach body coach for a while. I actually still am a beach body coach, but I don't do anything with it, obviously. Um, I, from there, we moved to Florida. I worked at the yarn store, and of course, my life was all about knitting. Um, back to cross stitch and started making YouTube videos, so now a YouTube creator, and now I am embarking on a new path. Everything has been in the creative realm because that is a huge part of who I am. And so I've never been afraid to try something new. I've never been afraid of change. And so announcing Jan Hicks creates stunning cross stitch designs. I will be, I am working on charting my photos for cross stitch. So, how did I get here? There have been several of you that have mentioned in the past, you know, as I show my video, or I sh as I show my photos on my videos that you'd like to stitch that. And I never really thought anything about it other than like, yeah, that'd be nice. You know, that kind of thing. But one of the first conversations Anne and I had when we met up on the Big Island was her telling me I really should think about starting to chart my photos, that she thinks it would be, it would be a big hit. Anne and I go way back, and I really respect her opinion on pretty much everything. Um, so all the rest of that day, all the next day and through the events that happened that next day when Anne had her accident, all this was spinning through my head. Silently, because as an introvert, that's what I do, right? Just thinking about it. And then I started talking to Mike about it and the rest of the weekend, you know, it would come up in different ways. Well, that, that would mean this. Oh, but I could also do this. Oh, well, you know, that would mean that. You know, that kind of thing. I would have to do this, I would have to do that. Um, but the more I thought of it, the more I thought, why not? I do take great photos, I know that. I have an eye for that. It isn't too big of an investment. There is a big investment of time, but it isn't a big investment of money. I already have the website. I'm very technologically savvy. Why not? So here we are. Jan Hicks creates stunning cross-stitch designs based on my photos. So let me show you a little bit of what I've been doing. I am not ready to open my store yet. This is just to kind of whet your appetite a bit. I have been working on my store all week. I've been working on creating some designs all week. Um, 
I can't really do much more with my store until Mike gets home and helps me with some of the more technical things like setting up the security certificate to make sure the site's secure. This will be on Mad for Yarn. Um, to make sure the site's secure, getting a privacy poly policy and terms and conditions and all those little bits and pieces that go into having a shop. It will be totally through PayPal. I am not going to mess with any other types of payment. So, my photos. I started going back through what I have, not only things from Hawaii, but things before. And I just thought I would show you some of what I'm working with. So all the gorgeous sunset and water pictures that you find here in Hawaii, um, Hanama Bay. And you know, a large part of this is how much sky and water can you stand to stitch? <laughs> I don't know. Would you want to stitch that much darkness? I don't know. This one is a no-brainer. I haven't done that one yet. But then you have things like my doors. This is in Tucson, Arizona. I adored walking through Tucson and taking pictures of the gorgeous doors there. So there you have that one. And then this is the cross stitch, the stitched mock-up generated by the, um, by the software that I'm working on. I have several pictures of the Grand Canyon that I would like to do. Pretty amazing, right? I know, I'm kind of tooting my own horn, but that's why I'm here. I have, sorry for all the back and forth. These aren't in any sort of order when I put them into my album. I have this picture of the inside of a hot air balloon. When we visited the Southwest, we were in Santa Fe and we did a hot air balloon ride. And as they were um, blowing up, expanding the hot air balloon, I took this picture of the inside of it. So there's that. But one of the things I love to do is to play around in different apps on my iPad, different kind of um, effect and painting apps and recreate a different look for my, for my pictures. So I took that picture and made this. So it's more of a watercolor look. And that one is now this. Let me turn it this way. And there is the charted mock-up of it. Let's see. Also from that Santa Fe trip, that hot air balloon trip, I walked through the desert a little bit and got that. Now, I don't know whether anybody but me likes that type of photo. I love, I've talked about it before, I love grunge. I love old houses. Um, we took a picture driving through the um, countryside outside of, I think it was Valdosta, Georgia, of a house that was, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, deserted with a tree growing up through it. Amazing picture. Um, a factory, an old warehouse with vines growing through it, you know, that's deserted. I love those type of pictures. I don't know whether anybody would want to stitch it, but I figure I put it out there. We'll see. Again, Santa Fe. 
Anne wants me to remove the background of this. Anne is not a full coverage stitcher. So for her to recommend to me that I work, I do these full coverage charts, um, I think, I hope really speaks to her belief in um, the idea that this could work, that this is something people would be interested in. And I know there's an awful lot of you out there who are like, oh Jan, full coverage, really? Is that your surprise? I'm sorry if you're disappointed. I'm excited. Off of M Mount Desert Island in, um, in Maine, Bar Harbor. Misty New England morning. And again, I don't know whether people would be interested in, in stitching this with all that gray. Grand Prismatic, this is the first one I showed you. I have a cousin who owns an airplane. She lives in Utah. She came and visited us um, when we did our trip through Yellowstone. She came and met up with us, flew out in her plane. So she took us up and we flew over the different, um, the different features in Yellowstone. Well, we, we flew all over Yellowstone and I was able to get this amazing shot of the Grand Prismatic. This isn't something that you can find everywhere out there. So creating that into a cross stitch pattern, that is what the mock-up looks like. Now this one I did keep fairly big. 251 colors and 500 by 500. Because I felt for this one, we wanted to keep the detail. I don't know whether you can see it on screen, but above the, the, um, the hot spring itself, you can see the, the boardwalk, you can see people on it, and then you have the two smaller springs up there at the top of the picture. Just, just had to keep that in there. So I kind of have adjusted, you know, the hard part on this is knowing what the balance is between how big, how many colors balanced with the detail. What am I willing to lose so that it's not too crazy? And yeah, I could make two versions like Heaven and Earth Designs does, you know, the, the max version and the regular version. And I may do that. Um, but for this, I'm kind of like picking and choosing depending on the pattern or dep depending on the picture. So I'm just going to kind of spin through these a bit. Bass Head Lighthouse on Mount Desert Island. Sunset photo here, sunset photo. This is a um, picture from the Luau down at Koalina. I think it's Paradise Cove. Come on. This is on the North Shore, and I love the way the waves are captured there. Sorry for the, the reflection in this. That's off the Big Island. That's the Big Island. That's Kailua Kona. This is the first one I tried to design. I tried to design, I did design. This is Sunset on Siesta Key. Let me find my original of that. Needless to say, I have a ton of photos from Siesta Key as well, where we used to live. Oh, I don't have the original one here. Here's the pattern page with the original. I have a ton from Siesta Key from when we lived in Florida, in Sarasota. So that is one of those. And this is another one where I definitely had to balance how big, how many colors. I didn't want to lose all those colors, so there's 151 colors in this one. But it's only 300 by, only, <laughs> 300 by 300. I took that hot air balloon adapted picture and made some kaleidoscopes. 
So you may see some of those. This is a picture, let me see if I have the original. This is the original photo, and then this is the one after playing with it in different paint apps. And I could do both, you know, do the original and do both. That is actually from um, a winery in the Camp Verde area of Arizona. There is the original Bass Head Lighthouse photo. So these stairs, love these stairs. These are in a building in, um, in Chicago. I don't remember which building. I'm sure any of my Chicago friends is yelling it out to me right now. <laughs> and I took that, there's another shot. Isn't that fascinating? So I will do both of those. But then I took those, whoops, how about that? The spooky graveyard on the big island. Where is my kaleidoscope? Hold on. All right, so I took, oh, it's coming up. This photo I wanted to show you though, This is a shot out of the airplane window on our flight back from the Big Island. And I'm not sure about this one because you can see all this modeling up here from the airplane window, but otherwise it's a gorgeous shot. This is the sun reflecting on the water, shining off the clouds. So I don't know, let me know if you think that would be a good one. But here's one of the kaleidoscopes from the staircase, stop that. And there's the other one. So I think both of those are really fun. So yeah, I have, okay, this one, let me show you these next two too, and then I'll talk a little more about things. This is a hibiscus, I believe it's a hibiscus. Um, in the Santa Fe. I think this was outside of the Laredo Church in Santa Fe. And this was a little shop in Santa Fe. So I have charted both of those. And this one I was able to get it down to 113 colors and it still looked good. And there is the the charted depiction of that, the computer generated. I love that. I think I need to stitch that. I think that's gorgeous. And then um, the flower one, here's the charted depiction of that one. Now, um, I actually removed the background, the green leaves all through here. I removed the background on that because I could not get the leaves to look good they were very splotchy and speckled. I love how that turned out though. I think that will be a really nice one to stitch. Other ones I have to work on. I love this one. Tombstone down in um, southern Arizona, south of Tucson. We did a winery tour, and this was an old Mercedes sitting out in front of one of the wineries. Now granted, not everybody's gonna like this type of photo and that type of photo, and my you know, broken down old fence in the desert type of photo. I love them. I think they have so much character. There's my balloon, Santa Fe, doors, doors in Santa Fe. I could do a whole series of doors. I took so many pictures of doors. This is one of my favorites. That will get made into a chart, and then that one. How gorgeous is that? I have other ones that will get made into charts as well. So, and last but not least, another sunset. This is the one off the Big Island. So as I mentioned, one of the difficult things about this, and this is where I would love to have your opinion, is knowing what the balance is, what the stitcher can handle as far as speckled, 
versus how many colors versus size. I am going to turn you around here and show you my, my computer screen so I can talk about it a little bit and have you look at it because I, I would love, for those of you that do full coverage stitches, now granted, most of what's out there are not from photos. Most of it are from artwork of some sort. But um, I think it still holds true that, I, it, that you have to accept some amount of speckling, some amount of, um, I guess not, you know, there's no way you can take a photo because there's millions of pixels in that photo, right? And, and so many colors. There's no way you can totally transfer that into a cross stitch design and have it be totally like the picture. So what's the balance? How big, how many colors to get a good look and not be to totally make it so big that nobody would wanna do it, basically. Okay, hold on one second, I'm gonna turn you around. Okay, so you are looking at my computer screen. I I um, use the program Max Stitch. Excuse, excuse the wobble, I am holding the, um, the tripod in my hand for this because I want to move you around the screen a bit. So I, this is one of the photos that I am currently working on. This is the lighthouse on Campobello Island up in Canada just um, to the northeast of the mo most northern, eastern tip of Maine. <laughs> um, yeah, you go, you cross over at Lubeck to get over to Campobello Island. Anyway, I have this down at 0%. This is 165 colors and the chart size is 450 by 449, so pretty much a square. So this is the, um, I'm sorry for the kind of, I don't know what you call that that happens when you have a computer screen looking at a computer screen. Probably not the best way to do this, but it'll have to do. Um, so this is basically the real life depiction, the zero percent. So when I start to zoom in, and it doesn't look bad there. Now, 165 colors and 450 by 450 basically. When I start to zoom in, though, of course, you start to see the speckle. It still looks pretty good. This is zoomed into 20%. And of course, you know, this isn't what your eye is really seeing, but one of the things that concerns me when I, or that I'm unsure of at this point, when I look at these charts is, see all the kind of, I can only call them speckle, I don't know what the proper name is, of the colors ranging through the clouds. You know, this is how it depicts, depicts all the different colors that are in the sky. And then, let me scroll down here. I can, oh, it's going to slow down. And then you get down to the water. Well, and you can see like all the rocks here, there's so much speckling that happens in the rocks. How much of that is okay? Look at the colors in the water. I never know how much of that I should clean up. And then if I start taking away colors, does it make it better or worse? So that is, um, that is all the give and take that happens in my brain as I'm working on these charts. And I would love to get input from you on, for those of you that do the full coverage pieces, on what you can handle and what you can't, what, what you will work with and what you can't. The other one I'm working on is this one. This is the one, the sunset off of the North Shore here with those waves splashing up. And you can actually see through here those waves splashing up. Again, this is the 0% um, image. 
And this one I have to say, I haven't messed with this a whole lot. This is 159 um, colors and it is, it is 416 by 293. So again, forgive the kind of funny thing that happens. Screen, computer screen is computer screen. And I, I'm really kind of pleased with how you can see the waves splashing up on this. Now, the thing that concerns me on this one, and, and the I want you to look at these rocks here. That doesn't look bad down here at the 0%. But as I start to bring it up, you can see that the checkerboard look of those two different colors. And I know it's the two different colors that kind of give it some of the, you know, the depth and texture. I'm just not sure how much of that we need. So yeah, let me, let me know your thoughts. Again, backing up on this so that it looks more realistic. I'm not, I'm not unhappy with it, but I want to know from you what you think about these type of charts, what you think about how the colors play out. I am very happy with how the sky looks. I don't think I want to take any of these colors out, but it is 159 colors. So is it worth taking some out and losing some of that detail? I don't know. All right, I'm gonna flip you around for one more thing. All right, so, for those of you that may be disappointed that this is all about full coverage pieces, I am sorry, but my creativity only goes so far. <laughs> I do have something for you though. Now, sakes hold on I designed this in Photoshop like I said I'm not afraid of technology I'm although my my Photoshop knowledge is a little bit in the archives of my mind and I had to dig that out a bit <laughs> um, I am pretty comfortable in Photoshop so, I created this in Photoshop, and then I brought it over into this, the um, Mac Stitch software and created it as a cross-stitch chart. The black is um, the cloth color, so you could use whatever fabric you wanted for this. So I showed this to Mike you know, during the conversation of not everybody likes full coverage and that's fine. Um, so this is not going to appeal to everybody, but I did do this. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, you never know what the future holds. You may find yourself doing other things, you know, down the road. I don't know whether I will. This was, it has brought a whole new level of respect to me for cross stitch designers who just design. Um, this was not easy. And again, it was a balance of finding, because I really wanted something small. But from what I designed here, it had to be big in order to retain the detail. Otherwise, it just looked, it looked stupid and chunky and just weird. It does only have 13 colors. But the stitch count is 200 by 199, so it is a little bigger. Now this is the one, when I talked about a project yesterday that I'm working on um, to use the Mississaitis silk for substitutions, this is the one I was working on. So I am going to be doing a substitution chart for this in Mississaitis silk. I just have to figure out how to get it into the software and how to get the page into the chart that the software spits out. These are all gonna be PDFs. I will not be doing hard copy patterns. It will all be PDF downloads 
from my website paid through PayPal. So guys, exciting times ahead. It's t cutting into my stitching time something awful, but I try and cut myself off from the computer at three or four, um, usually three, like 10 to three, so that I do have time to like live my life. Cause I, I've been married to my computer at times in the past and I, I refuse to go back to that type of lifestyle. But anyways, let me know what you think. I want all of your feedback on what you feel about this kind of charts, about your level of tolerance for colors and size. Um, yeah, let me hear it. I'm, I'm excited to grow and learn and I am excited for you to take this journey with me. Do not be afraid um, to give me constructive criticism. Don't be mean about it. <laughs> no meanness allowed. But um, I am interested in hearing what you have to say. So anyways, that's it for me today. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Mike comes home tomorrow. I am thrilled about that. Um, yeah, and I will see you next week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.